Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I really would like to thank TTN for hosting us here today. This is a great uh, event. I'm always very enthusiastic to see the, the vibrations of the wood ecosystem when I come here. And I would like to thank you for, I mean, for taking the time to attend the, the, my, my keynote. Today, I'm going to uh, bring you through a very short journey on uh, our last chip that we launched six months ago. That's the L1121. Uh, before to go into the details of the chip itself, I just want to uh, spend a few words about the LoRa Connect uh, uh, text below the title, uh, because LoRa Connect is the part of our portfolio that is dedicated to the transceiver uh, chips. So only chips that provide uh, TX and RX LoRa uh, connectivity. Okay? And it's different from the previous, uh, let's say, launched uh, section of the portfolio called LoRa Edge, where we offer also the geoloca some geolocation features uh, bundled with the connectivity. So LoRa Connect is there only to represent all our uh, vanilla transceivers, uh, LRN21 is just the, uh, the last one. Uh, in the previous generation, we had uh, A612, 61, 62, 68 for China. And uh, the very first generation was the uh, 12, 6, 70, uh, uh, 71. So let's now uh, start into the detail of what is LRN21. Uh, it's basically... Uh, uh, an implementation of the third generation uh, LoRa demod um, on our silicon. It's so we would improved performances, and we can uh, resume it as a multi-regional uh, transceiver, LoRa transceiver with multi-band capabilities. We will see later what are those uh, bands. Uh, here I'm uh, showing. The LRN21 with the, the other two LR11X6 uh, devices that our uh, whole portfolio offers. Uh, as you will see, we have the LR21, which is part of LoRa H, uh, LR1110, which is part of LoRa H, and both have geolocation features uh, bundled with the connectivity, while the LR21 gets rid of the geolocation features and offers this LoRa and LRFHSS connectivity over several bands. What are those bands? Of course, all the sub-gigahertz, traditional sub-gigahertz bands that are today leveraged for, uh, into the LoRa 1 standard, but we also have uh, the possibility to use the device into the uh, SATCOM S band uh, in order to satisfy the demand coming from all those operators that are harnessing lower and lower FHSS in licensed band around two gigahertz. The example here are uh, EcoStar and Lacuna that they're both out there. Uh, and we are also enabling LoRa to the four gigahertz gigahertz. Now, the satellite landscape is, is very rich. Uh, so we felt the need to provide a device capable to satisfy not only the S band, but also all the other partners that are uh, planning or developing or we have ready in orbit uh, satellites operating in the sub-gigahertz SM band. So this is a really a single SKU serving the satellite operators like Elospace, as I see here in the audience. Uh, we have Plan S also with a booth. Uh, so it's emerging, it's fast, fastly growing, and that's a device that could fit their expectation as a single um, single SKU, single uh, point of, of sales, uh, providing also some sort of interoperability between the different uh, solutions. And a few words about 2.4 gigahertz. That's um, a testament of our commitment to uh, offer um, uh, advanced devices with better performances uh, to the customers that are already engaged into the 2 to 4 gigahertz uh, uh, market uh, with, uh, with LoRa 
with LoRa. We have examples here of Rack Wireless, Miriam Eco, um, that, uh, but, uh, that are offering those kind of solutions. Irnas, I think, is going to have uh, another keynote uh, later today. So the 2 for gigahertz ecosystem is growing, and there was a need for a single device capable to provide interoperability between 2.4 gigahertz band and sub gigahertz band. This was not the case uh, in the past because uh, we, I mean, customer dealing with 2.4 gigahertz had to use uh, a device only providing LoRa in this band. So now we fix it, uh, we close this, this gap, okay? And also for this kind of uh, uh, use cases, uh, we can provide uh, a single chip capable to switch from one band to the other. Uh, now, what are, let's say, the uh, detailed features of LRM 21? So I already said it's the most advanced demo that we are offering here with the LoRa improved uh, sensitivity, almost 3 dB with respect to the, S6, to the previous generation, S6, 1260, S61. Uh, of course, uh, we paid since the uh, day one of the development cycle uh, we paid a lot of attention to keep the power consumption minimal. Uh, that's the, the biggest value that we are offering to, to the LoRaWAN ecosystem. It's pin-to-pin -pin compatible with the LR11 10 and the LR11 20, uh, 20. So customers that have already started developing hardware uh, based on geolocation uh, applications, now they can easily reconvert their hardware, just replacing the uh, LoRa H chip with the LR21. If they are sensitive to the cost, of course, because the LR21 uh, uh, is going to have a lower cost than that LoRa H, so they can get re replaced the LR21 and, and 11 with the LR21 in order to address use cases where there is no need for uh, geolocation. Uh, uh, features associated to our uh, lower age uh, uh, family. Uh, the other uh, import, very important point is that the device is, of course, compatible with the LoRa Basics modem, which is this, uh, the newest implementation of the LoRa One stack that we are offering to the market. Uh, openly available through GitHub. Um, and it's for us, LoRa Basics Modem is for us the, the vehicle uh, with which we are going to bring uh, innovations, the innovation that the LoRa Alliance uh, will deem necessary to introduce into the protocol. Uh, today we are uh, uh, starting uh, introducing relay into LoRa Basics Modem, and again, this feature uh, will, I mean, is available through the LoRa 21. Uh, thanks to the uh, compatibility with the LoRa Basics modem uh, library. Uh, oh, yes, last, last point, but not least, the like LR10 and 20, LR21 has also a uh, secure uh, engine uh, integrated, a place where the uh, customers or the end user can safely store uh, keys that are going to be needed for the network provisioning of the device itself. Uh, so uh, that's also something that uh, uh, we are offering uh, into this new platform, knowing that it's, uh, it can be uh, tied to our uh, LoRa cloud services, uh, offering the joint server uh, capability. Uh, okay. Next one. So what are the markets that we are targeting with this device? Basically, we are targeting all the markets, the, the usual markets that LoRaWAN is targeting. But we have, uh, I would say, a stronger value proposition for some key markets that we know are very sensitive to the possibility to use 2 to 4 gigahertz band. Uh, worldwide available in the same way, so single SKU behaving in the same uh, way uh, everywhere in the world, like, for instance, uh, industrial, okay, and where sometimes there is no need to cover miles or kilometers of range, but few hundred of meters are okay, uh, and they appreciate 
um, most of the time, those customers appreciate the possibility to send the solution wherever in the world without having to pay attention to the different regional uh, uh, specification or regulations. Uh, we offer also a stronger value proposition into the smart agriculture and environment thanks to the emergence of, uh, of the satellite uh, platforms uh, that are expanding, I would say, the, the, the coverage offering uh, into remote areas where building or deploying a LoRaWAN network it, it's not, I mean, does not make the business case, basically. It's not possible. Uh, and so, uh, that's, those are, I would say, the, the, the focus where we, this device, we can bring more value to, uh, to the market. Uh, in terms of partner innovation, so I already mentioned it, uh, several customers that uh, uh, are already offering devices uh, and solutions over satellite or uh, over 2 to 4 gigahertz. I would like also to mention here uh, Murata as a key partner for us that has already uh, developed and is presenting uh, one of their modules, the 2GT, which is based on LRM21, uh, but is also, I would say, its portfolio is also covering uh, the other LR11 uh, devices. And uh, Johansson Technology, which uh, uh, designed uh, uh, an, an IPD, uh, basically simplifying and abstracting all the complexity of the RF section, uh, condensating uh, almost 20 uh, passive devices into uh, one single uh, passive uh, uh, IPD device that can be leveraged when miniaturization is a must for, uh, for the application. Uh, how it's available, so you can find, uh, as usual, a development kit on our website with the two antennas, one covering the, uh, 900, the US and Europe uh, regulated regions, uh, and the other one with the, an antenna for 2 to 4 gigahertz. We have a, a, a different, let's say, skew, different evaluation kit covering the China uh, regional parameters because of the uh, 470 uh, megahertz. Uh, in terms of collaterals, uh, let me just uh, highlight that uh, everything is already available on GitHub. Drivers for the device uh, are, are there. Uh, the, uh, I mentioned the Lora Basics modem uh, library, uh, bringing the uh, you, I would say the last uh, uh, Lora One stack implementation, and uh, the host MCU driver that uh, uh, are also available uh, under GitHub freely as usual. That's all. Thank you.